Salwete Amnes, this is I'm Emilia, also known as the Martian Geek, and we have a special celebrity guest with us today. Roam, you want to introduce yourself? Hello, Roam Mithril here. Yes, indeed. On my channel today, there be dragons. Well, maybe just one. Uh, a friendly one. Yeah. Well, I guess some of the questions I might be asking might have been already answered on your website, but, you know, for the benefit of my viewers who probably don't go on Dragonsoft Studios too much, pardon any potential redundancy. Oh, no, that's fine. All right, so, how are you doing today? Family okay and all that? Uh, things are actually going pretty smoothly right now. Family and friends seem to be doing okay, so, yeah, it's actually been a pretty decent day thus far. All right, that's good. How did you get into LPing and perfect runs in the first place? Uh, it's kind of two separate things. Doing perfect runs, that's something I've always kind of done on just my own time with the uh, the classic Mega Man series, at least. Because I've always really enjoyed that series, and so I would just play those games over and over and over and try and find new ways to do things and just have fun with it. And so I did like perfect runs before I even had a name for the system and the challenge and everything uh, of some of the easier stages like Top Man, Toad Man, that sort of thing. And so when I started doing Let's Plays on my channel, I kind of realized that was something... I wanted to see how far I could go with that challenge, and I wanted to see if I could do every stage that way. As far as doing Let's Plays in general, uh, I kind of got into it by watching other Let's Players. Like, my first exposure to it was Rao Cow and Proton John. Uh, so that was my first real exposure to Let's Play videos. But what really got me to where I felt like it was something I could do was when my friend Shag, uh, when they started doing videos like that, it made it feel like a more attainable goal, like something I could definitely do. And the rest is history, I suppose. Yeah, pretty much. All right. So what does the furry fandom mean to you? Like, I'm assuming there's more to it than just, you know, dragons are cool and I feel like I have the spirit of one. Like, do you especially like stories or games that involve dragons? <laughs> Sarkhan and Narset would certainly get along with you. Uh... Furries in general, like the furry fandom, it's not something that I'm like, you know, super prominent in the furry fandom or anything like that. I'm not particularly well known. I'm not that active in the fandom. Never been to a convention or anything like that. Uh, it was just kind of a group that I sort of stumbled across after some recurring dreams I had when I was growing up. I had these dreams that I was flying, but I never really understood how. Until one time I had the dream again, and I was flying over this very clear reflective lake. I looked down, and I saw myself as a dragon, and that image just kind of resonated with me, and so it sort of became the character that I portray on the internet, basically, just sort of the persona I put out there. Uh, furries in general, I just tend to find them a bit more interesting. I mean, humans are okay, but there's only so much variance you can get there, whereas when you introduce, like, anthropomorphic animals into the mix, there's just so much more variety there, I find them so much more fun to draw, really, so... That's the sort of thing with that, really. Sure, that works. Um, I notice you don't tend to really swear in your videos. I mean, that's perfectly fine with me. I really don't either, but is there any personal reason for that, or just never really got into the habit? Uh, it's kind of just something I'm not really in the habit of doing. I mean, I will swear from, times to time, uh, from time to time. I'm not like, you know, a super prude or anything like that, but I have to be really angry before I start using that kind of language, and... Gaming just doesn't really get me to that level. Uh, basically, if you hear me use that kind of language, someone somewhere messed up. Fair enough. So, pretty much, like, following my philosophy of saving it for when you really need it, and you're like, I can only really think of two times in my life that I've ever used, ever genuinely swore, and, well, at least not counting, like, quoting somebody who used swear words. And, you know, both of those times I, I felt like I really meant it, I guess, so... Yeah, uh, Kind of the same thing with you? It's kind of that. Uh, like, an example of it that I can point out, uh, something I just uh, remembered. As much as I don't, like, follow the show South Park, there was an episode that it dealt with swearing, because there was some sort of uh, FCC restriction on using swear words on TV that got lifted to where you could say certain words a certain number of times in a certain time period, I think it was. And so they just went whole hog on this and just started, uh, I think it was the S word, that they just kept saying repeatedly over and over and over throughout the show. And the point that they got to with it 
was uh, showing that the more you use a word like that, the less impact it has, the, the less power it has behind it. And I think that's something I kind of agree with. So, I yeah, mean, like, exactly. it's like I said, if I use that kind of language, it's impactful because of how rarely I use it. Yeah. Like I said, I'm with you on that. Let's see. Um, other than Mega Man Battle Network and Pokemon, are there any other RPGs you like? Turn-based, action, tactical, whatever? And on that note, I know you'll never play Mega Man X no matter how many people protest, <laughs> but how, many, how do you feel about Mega Man X Command Mission? Admittedly, I've never played it myself, but I'm curious. I've never actually played Command stuff Mission there, like, just because Rails, Mario RPGs. it's just something, you know, I mean, I'm not interested in the X series. I don't really like the setting or the characters or whatever. So I've never been too interested in trying Command Mission, but I do give it points for having a platypus. That's kind of awesome. And just, it's an unusual animal. So it, it cracks me up when I see a platypus in something. As far as RPGs in general, it's just kind of a hard there, genre for me to get into usually. Uh, just because of the time commitment behind them usually, so I usually tend to favor action type RPGs, things like uh, Secret of Mana, Kingdom Hearts, that sort of thing. There are exceptions to the rule, like uh, I like Persona 4, I like uh, Final Fantasy 9, obviously I am a Pokemon addict, things like that. Gotta have those shinies. Oh yes. So, and you've mentioned liking action RPGs more than turn-based RPGs, right? Yes. All right. Yeah, you should consider the E series more, I suppose. Uh, Those yeah, pretty much uh, convinced me I could like action RPGs. There, I've actually played one of the East games, and and yeah, <laughs> I, I always just pronounce it wise. It's one of those things. It's hard to tell how it's supposed to be said, but East probably makes more sense. But uh, I've played yeah. Wanderers from East 3 on the Super Nintendo. Uh, that's the only entry in the series that I've played, but yeah, it was pretty nice. <laughs> I'd imagine a lot of people mispronounce it. I think the, the first one I played was East Origin, which it's on Steam, and presumably, I would hope that's not the only distribution platform it's on on PC, for your sake, but... Right. Um, now, how about, how about things like Mario or Donkey Kong? I mean, I know everyone and their mother has done LPs of those, so I'd assume that's at least part of the reason I have yet to really see you do many much stuff, any of those on your channel, but more of a fan of the run-and-gun style of 2D platformer rather than the hop-and-bop kind, perhaps? Not so much. Really, it's more just a thing of, usually if I do a project on my channel, it's because that's what I really feel like playing at the time. Uh, so, it's more just a thing of, I guess, I haven't really been supremely in the mood of, you know, I really want to play a Mario game right now. But it's not completely out of the question. Like, I have actually thought about that I'd kind of want to do LPs of the Super Mario Galaxy games, maybe Sunshine... Uh, things like that. Uh, I really do like the Mario games, and also on that note, another like uh, hop and bop type platformer I'd kind of like to play sometime would be Sonic Unleashed. It's my favorite of the Sonic games, and so that's something huh. I'm actually considering fairly soon. Well, I will keep an eye out for it. Now, how about stuff like Journey to Silius, The Creon Crust, or Bucky O'Hare? Seems like the NES actually has quite a few of those in that style, really. It, it really does, too, yeah. Well, I think that's only in Japanese. Uh, I've actually played Kokoron. Uh, I got an emulation of that while I was attending Full Sail, and it's a pretty fun game. It's interesting. Uh, I actually forget if I fully completed it or not. Uh, I think I did, but it was a fun game. Uh, Journey to Silius, I've heard the title, but I don't really know anything about the game. I've never played that one. Uh, the Cryon Conquest, I have played that one. I can definitely feel some kind of Mega Man influence, or at the very least similarities there, but there are a lot of parts of that game that feel a little bit awkward to me, mostly some of the enemy placement and such, but uh, but it's okay for what it is. Bucky O'Hare, uh, when I was a little kid, I was actually... Game having awkward design? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, really. But uh, Bucky O'Hare, when I was a little kid, I was super into that cartoon, so I did play the game, and from what I recall... It was actually pretty fun. I want to say I have a copy of it kicking around somewhere. I'm not sure where, but I'm pretty sure I have it somewhere. And it's something a friend of mine actually brought up at one point, and I might consider doing it as an LP at some point. Sure. Well, I hope you do still have a copy of it around if you like the game, because nowadays it's like $90 on eBay and things <laughs> like that. Yeah. It kind of sucks trying to get those old games for, on the original cartridge a lot of the time. <laughs> So, 
you're an ice dragon, even though I have yet to really see any artwork reflecting that. And I noticed there's not a whole lot of ice in Texas. Do you think <laughs> you'd move if you didn't have any family or friends there to worry about? Mm, yes, I, I, I really want to move. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of cursed in that regard. I am an ice dragon, but the only places I've ever been in my life are the southern border of the United States. I've been everywhere from Southern California to Florida, and I've spent most of my life living <laughs> in Texas. So... Yeah, it's not the right climate for me. I mean, I'm of Scottish descent. My genetics are telling me I'm supposed to be in a foggy moor somewhere, <laughs> not in the blazing summer heat waves of Texas. Oh, no kidding. Uh, the biggest obstacle for me, really, in that regard is just money. I, it it sucks that so much in life comes down to money, no but I just... I would like to move somewhere of a better climate and also to have real internet instead of the cardboard satellite of HughesNet slash DishNet, but unfortunately it's just not really in the cards right now. Sure, fair enough. I can certainly understand not having the money for things. Yeah, you know, you could always come to Montana. We have plenty of cold weather here. I guess there was that one year where it was like 100 degrees for a month straight, but on average, yeah, and you know, you'd fit right in even as a hippie, at least where I live. <laughs> Sounds so, good to me. That's something. Yay. So, care to share a bit about your recording setup? Uh, my recording setup is, uh, it's very much on a shoestring budget held together with duct tape, uh, literally in the case of my headset. It's the, it's the best headset I've ever had. It's, uh, I honestly forget at this point what the brand name is because that's part of what's covered up by duct tape. <laughs> uh, but it's the best headset I've had. <laughs> it's, uh, been the one that I've had since I started doing recording. Any headset I've had since then has had problems with recording to where I didn't really like the quality. Uh, the worst I've had was a Logitech headset that everything that I recorded on it, it sounded like it was coming across a really bad telephone connection, so yeah, that wasn't any good. Uh, as far as software, it's pretty Jeez. much all freeware stuff just because that's what I can afford, really. Uh, so I have a screen recorder uh, called Cam Studio. It's, it's like I said, freeware. It basically does what I need it to do, though it does drop frames sometimes. It usually works well enough for my purposes. Uh, for sound recording, I use a demo version of WavePad Sound Editor that basically everything that's locked out of it and says, you can use this if you upgrade to the full version, it's nothing I really need. So all the core elements are there that I really need, so it works for what I, uh, for what I want it for. Uh, and for video editing, I just use Windows Movie Maker, came free with Windows. As for that, my system is kind of an old one. I use uh, Vista 32-bit, uh, partly because, again, money issues, I can't really afford a new system just yet, but I am saving up for one. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to be able to get one, but, you know, hopefully it does what I need it to do. Uh, but the other reason I use Vista 32-bit is because of my... Uh, my capture device for console recording is the Adaptech GameBridge, and that doesn't work on any operating system past Vista 32-bit. Yeah, that's annoying. I had a similar <laughs> experience with my video editor. I actually bothered to save up and buy one, even though it was a relatively cheap one. And then I had to buy it again when it stopped working when I switched to Windows 10. Oh. But yeah, I can, I can certainly relate to the money issue. And yeah. yet, somehow, despite me... Somehow, with all the that minimalistic stuff, you still manage to have much more professional sounding and looking videos than me. Oh, well, it's it's kind of a learning process. I mean, I've been at this since, I think, 2008, 2009, so I've got a lot of years of experience with this. And, and you can tell from watching, like, some of my older videos compared to the more recent ones how much more uh, confidence I've gotten, how much more energy in what I do. Uh, like, my earliest videos, I just, <laughs> I sounded like I really didn't want to be there. I sounded like I was half asleep just because I really didn't know what I was doing just yet. So it's something that the more you work on it, the more experience you get with it, the better you get at it, that sort of thing. Sure. Well, I guess I started in 2010, and I could have sworn it was longer ago than that. But hey, at least I suck less at it now than I did <laughs> then. Well, there you go. Uh... Is there anything else you'd like to tell about yourself? I guess I haven't really mentioned your artwork yet. Uh, yeah, that's kind of my other major passion in life, is that uh, other than video games, I love drawing. Usually, like, pencil and paper, uh, colored pencil, if I want to do something more detailed or whatever. Uh, I actually do have an art tablet for my computer, but 
I don't know. It just doesn't really feel the same to me. I don't know if maybe it's just because it's an older one that doesn't have like a visual screen for drawing on it. And so you just kind of have to guess where your stylus is when you're drawing. So it's hard to pick it back up where I left off. Uh, also, I just don't really have a lot of experience with it. But pencil and paper will always kind of feel more natural to me, I think. I'm not a fan of touch screens either. <laughs> I've noticed that artists always seem to be either pretty cool or really emo, or sometimes even both at once. <laughs> I, I have my moments, I freely admit. Yeah, I know a few myself. Alright, time for... Oh, wait, actually. Um, do you have any advice for anyone else looking to start doing Let's Plays or even Perfect Runs or other challenge runs, anything like that, do you think? Uh, best advice I can really give is just, you know, love what you do. Uh, don't get into it just for the numbers. If you get into it purely for the numbers, you're getting into it for the wrong reason, because then you're just going to be at the beck and call of what these people want and not what you want to do. And I just in general feel like you're not going to have as much fun doing that. Also, big one, if you don't want to just be constantly hounded about the same series day in, day out, don't make the same mistake I did. Get variety going on your channel from day one. I played classic Mega Man as like the first <laughs> first eight or nine projects on my channel, and so that's like what I usually get asked about, even though I have so many other things on my channel. And I'll even occasionally get comments like, you haven't posted Mega Man in a while, are you dead? Even though I'm in the middle of doing another project. Well, I, I guess that's one thing, at least I didn't have to worry about at the beginning. <laughs> there you go. Oh, well, good. All right, time for the random question lightning round, I suppose. All right, bonus points. Uh, what's your favorite food? Uh, favorite food yeah. is chicken fettuccine alfredo, though in general I really like a lot of pasta dishes, but that one's my overall favorite. Uh, favorite color? Anything of a colder palette, really. Basically, anything ranging from green to blue, violet, purple, that sort of thing. Uh, I tend to mostly stay toward violet as my favorite color. A man after my own heart. Uh, favorite Mega Man game or games? Um, my favorite, or whatever series. Uh, my favorite Mega Man game in general would definitely be Mega Man 9. Just all the weapons felt really good in that game. They all felt useful. It wasn't like Mega Man 2 where there was a definite be-all, end-all weapon that was useful but kind of boring and overpowered. Uh, so I really liked the balance in Mega Man 9. That one was really good. As far as games in general, it's harder to say just because I like so many different genres of games. Like, it's hard to compare a platformer to survival horror or whatever. But I guess the game I come back to most often would just be, in general, the Pokemon series because, you know, collection aspect and hoarding instinct. Yep. Gotta have those shinies. Oh, yes. I have the opposite problem, I think. I'm so picky about what I'll play that I have <laughs> pretty good-sized stretches of time where I just don't really have anything yeah, to play. fair enough. Or else I do, but I've been playing the same genre for, like, I pretty much spent all of 2016 playing nothing but RPGs aside from Let's Plays and Replays, <laughs> so I'm a little burned out on them, I guess, mm. even if, even though they're good. Yeah, that can happen. Yeah, anyway, I digress. Now, what do you think your favorite video game soundtrack is? Ooh, favorite video game soundtrack? There's a lot of good ones out there. Uh... In general, I really love a lot of the Dynasty Warriors soundtracks just for how energized they sound. It's a lot of overdriven electric guitar and stuff, so it's really good for kind of feeling pumped up and everything. For the same reason, I love the Hyrule Warriors soundtrack because it's that same kind of energy but applied to Zelda music, and it sounds really nice. Huh. I may have to check those out. I've found a number of soundtracks that use a lot of... I don't know, for want of a better word, action-y type music like the East series for one, or East. Right. And, of course, Mega Man X. So I'm also a big fan out. of a lot of the Personally, Silent Hill soundtracks. Like, I love the work of Akira Yamaoka. I really love his songs. Huh. I hardly even notice the, mo the music in those. It seems like it's mostly just ambience. Personally, I'd go with Donkey Kong Country Pro and Tropical Freeze, almost certainly. Oh as man, as I, I really go. need to get that game and play it sometime. I've heard good things about both that one and Donkey Kong Country Returns. Oh yeah, if you haven't played either of those yet and you you do like that style of platformer, you, you should try them. Yeah, I'm actually I actually really doing a Let's Play of Returns right now. Oh nice. Might have to check that out. Sure, I'd I'd be appreciative. Um anyway, uh favorite real life musical artist or anything like that? Or whatever you call non-video game music. I know uh, real life is quite the right Yeah, phrase. I know what you're talking about. Like, actual music groups and everything. 
Uh, my overall favorite is Daft yeah. Punk. I really love their songs. Uh, I also really like uh, Blue Man Group, uh, Gorillaz, uh, Kansas. My musical tastes kind of range all over the place, except I tend to not really like things like... I'm not a big fan of rap, country, or like screamcore heavy metal where they're not really singing the lyrics, but more just screaming them at the top of their lungs. Like, I'm not a big fan of that kind of thing. Sure. Again, I can pretty much understand. <laughs> um, what do you think you you what superpowers do you think you'd have if you were a superhero or you know, turned into a mutant because of some freak accident or something? <laughs> well, Either as, based on personality or just desire. As boring a choice as it probably is as far as all the superpowers you can really have, it's one reason I tend to relate to my dragon form is I want flight. I want that feeling of freedom to just kind of leave things behind on the surface for a while and just go flying. I want that. Beyond that, uh, probably like Fair the main enough. power my dragon form has is elemental magic. I've always thought that was kind of cool. So I don't know if you can really call that a superpower, but it's probably the closest I get. <laughs> Oh, hey, that works. So, basically, your superpower power is you want to be a dragon. <laughs> basically, yes. All right. Well, if you could be a mythical creature other than a dragon, what do you think you'd choose? It would definitely still be something that can fly. I mean, that that that's my big thing. So, I don't know. Maybe like a Pegasus or a Griffin or something. Those are pretty cool. Sure. Um, any characters you particularly like, either in video games or other media? Uh. You can think of. Well, there's one character I really like. I just like her attitude, her voice, and everything, even though I've never played the games she stars in. But I like Bayonetta. She has kind of this this, this cool style. Uh, I have a weakness for that kind of voice, that kind of accent. It sounds really nice. Uh, I also really like Heather Mason from Silent Hill 3. She is pretty much my favorite protagonist in that series. Uh, just the way she handles the situation and everything. Uh, it's the same sort of thing with Resident Evil, where my favorite protagonist there is uh, Leon Kennedy because they're not afraid to bring the snark. And I think that's... It's the way I like to think I would handle that kind of situation, oh, yeah. is to try and find the humor to get through it. All right, cool. Kind of a similar... Well, okay, not that similar, but my favorite character is probably Estelle Bright from Trails in the Sky, and she certainly knows how to dish out the snark, too. So. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, do you have any sort of life philosophy, you think, that you, you could share? Uh... Basically, the best I can say there is just, you know, be good to each other. Uh, if if we as a human race could stop inventing stupid reasons to hate each other and could just come together as one big human race, there are so many things we could accomplish that we just can't otherwise because we're just too busy hating each other, and that just seems so stupid to me. Oh, yeah. Couldn't agree more there. Well, I guess we're about out of time here. Um, I guess I should mention that you were honestly probably my biggest source of inspiration for getting into Let's Plays myself, albeit kind of hilariously indirectly, but definitely still the biggest source of inspiration, so I'm honored to have you with me here. Well, thank you for having me, and I'm glad I could do that for you, and I hope you continue to enjoy what you do. Sure, I hope so too. So, thanks for your time. I'll have to, start, I'll have to keep watching those Resident Evil videos too. Honestly, <laughs> I am so far behind on like everyone I'm subscribed to on YouTube, you're one of at least four people, <laughs> one of, including one person who's actually done with the game she's working on, even though I'm only like four episodes in. Well, I'm uh, still yeah, working hard on, on Resident that, Evil, but... <laughs> uh, doing Whatever. some of Jill's extras and stuff. Sure. Oh, geez, you're done with the game, too? Uh, well, I'm done with Jill's run, except I have to go back and get the other endings, show some extra things that I didn't get a chance to show in the first run, and I still have to do Chris's game. Sure. Fair enough. All right, well then, like I said, thanks for your time, thanks for being here, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Well, I hope you do too. Thank you very much for having me. I had a lot of fun with this. Yeah, me too.